Our guest today is Dr. Susan Nicholas, who is a physician and a surgeon who, after a conscious awakening, transitioned her life and founded SusanNicholas.org, a conscious media company. She is a life transformation guide, a quantum energy healer, and an international speaker. Susan is a TEDx presenter on money consciousness, overcoming generational poverty. And Dr. Nicholas is a four-time author of Conscious Adult and Children's Books. In addition to that, she also hosts the Be Conscious podcast. And her diverse work has a common thread to awaken humanity to consciousness and Susan's perspectives and works have been featured in Yahoo Finance, the Associated Press, Huffington Post, Authority Magazine, Conscious Life Journal, Sway Media, Thrive Global, National Influence, TEDx, Ford Book Radio, Fox News, uh, and the NBC8 Ask the Doctor. So Susan, thank you very much for being here. How are you doing today? I'm well. Thank you, Jasko. Pleasure. Absolutely. So I, I love, um, you know, you have this broad and deep experience that you bring to, you know, your work now, obviously featuring a whole bunch of different outlets, uh, many different avenues that you've connected with people. So I'd love for you to just give us the context of that. Like, how do you, like, how did you get to doing what you were doing? What was your conscious awakening? Uh, I'd love for you to tell us in your own words. Sure. I was uh, trained as a surgeon and I was in a place during my fellowship in cardiothoracic surgery, well, where I felt that I had done it all, you know, I had exceeded my own expectations as to what I would achieve. Uh, yet I had this depth of emptiness inside, like a crevasse void, you know, of the soul. And I didn't know how to fix it. And I thought it was all about the career journey because I know now that I was on this journey of what I call external validation, where I was looking to do and be something where I could be feel good enough or feel validated by society. But at the end of the day, I, it left me empty inside. Like I, I truly was like, I felt like a robot just operating, doing what I should do or was supposed to, or it was good to do. Not really what I felt was my purpose or what I was on the planet to do. Uh, but I didn't have language for it. And I didn't have awareness uh, that I can speak to now, now that I'm out, you know, a few decades, a decade and a half from that. But at the time, I thought I had reached the end of the road and I attempted to take my own life. And that is when I believe that I first heard my inner self speak to me. And I knew I had something to do, uh, but I just didn't know what it was or how I, how I go about it. And I had within me a great deal of fear. Um, a, a lot of that fear surrounded my survival. Like if I didn't do this career that I had invested so much time, energy, money in, how would I support myself? And I really just believed that I had maybe chosen the wrong career and that I could correct this empty feeling if I did the right career. And so I went about doing that again. I, I transitioned out of clinical medicine and went into business school and said, okay, I've got this healthcare background and I've got a business degree. I do a healthcare company. And here I was again, I guess, on the hamster wheel of life, really searching for um, an honorable, decent way to support myself, using all of the uh, skills and education, only to find myself again in this empty space. And I thought if I go down this, I would say emotional cliff, like this soulful, um, and, and Francesca lapel de V, like this call of my own soul, like if I don't answer this, I'm not gonna make it. I knew that I wouldn't make it the second time around. And the second time around, I, I had a two-year-old son. So there was a five-year um, gap between the first time I felt this, during medicine and then the second time as a healthcare entrepreneur and in that five-year period I had given birth to my my son and he was two years old and I thought the only tether that I had to this life was being his mother and like everything else I could give up and that's when I believe dress God was given a gift I call it the gift of awareness where I began leaving out of my own body 
and having out-of-body experiences. Now, again, I was, I had never been a spiritual person. Uh, in fact, I think at that time in my life, I would have considered myself agnostic. I wasn't a religious person. I'd been down that journey, but I didn't hold any beliefs like strongly in any one way or another. I just thought about it more clinically. I thought, well, this must be what it looks like when people die. They start having experiences outside of themselves. And I was, and I honestly felt ready to go. And uh, what I think what happened for me was each time I would go out of myself, I'd, I'd be like, oh, this is it, this is it. But then, then I'd find myself waking up inside my body again and I would get, I was getting confused. I was like, do I have a brain tumor or when am I gonna just be out for good? And I, I felt strangely at peace about it. Like for the first, I, I, there was no fight. I was just, I was at peace with making that transition. And, you know, that was 2012. Here we are 10 years later and I'm still here. And uh, everything, uh, as far as my conscious work has come in the wake of that, where uh, I was, you know, again, I, I didn't know how my work and, and what I now know is my, is my conscious work. I didn't even have a language for it. I was like, what is this? What am I supposed to do with this? Um, this awakening process, this experience of, um, uh, you know, I began to see and perceive my own life differently in that of the whole, whole of humanity, but I didn't know what, what I, I could do with it. I could feel em energy emanating from me, like people describe chi. I tried to photo, I didn't know what to do with it. And uh, I was so concerned about the money journey, which is why I do a lot of talking on money consciousness that I continued working corporate jobs. Like I, <laughs> it sounds almost ridiculous now, but this is where I was most emotionally, mentally, um, that I, I still, I didn't know what to do with it. I, I was having these experiences. I knew that was something that I was supposed to be here for, but again, I was concerned about supporting myself. And so I ended up, um, divesting out of my healthcare company and I was recruited to an investment firm doing healthcare equities. And I thought, oh, you know, this will give me time and money and more experience in business, which, which I was interested in um, to, to do healthcare investing was just a little bit different than I thought I would be doing it. I thought I'd be doing venture and early stage healthcare companies. And I ended up doing uh, long-term, long, long money equities for established healthcare companies. And I thought, okay, this, this, this is good, you know, this will pay the bills and I'll learn stuff and make connections. Um, until two years into that job, I got fired. I mean, I, I went through this layoff. I was in the process of this layoff and I got a, I received a severance package and I thought, okay, this is 2016. And I thought to myself, this is, I'm going to finally do what I meant to do. <laughs> like, I'm not going to be afraid. Like all what was driving the bus for all those years um, was fear uh, and a lot of fear surrounding money, if I can be honest. And I just, it, it paralyzed me from doing what I, I feel is my, my true uh, purpose on the planet. And so when I uh, was fired from that job, I thought I'm going to, I'm going to do it. I've been wanting to write a book for like four years. I've been wanting to get my health together. Uh, all of those things were neglected. And within what six weeks of leaving that job, I began writing my first book. I, I lost like released like 30 pounds of weight. I started to feel good again. And I started to um, harness these superpowers. Um, I got my healing attunements and uh, I just began. I didn't know what it was gonna look like. I just began and from 2016 to now, um, I'm now again a four-time author. I I'm a speaker. Uh, I'm an energy healer. I host the Be Conscious podcast. I feel like I have a whole line of jobs, you know. Um, and I'm what I'm noticing is this um, still this drive to uh, support myself, like this 
okay, let me put it this way. I feel like I, I am in cycles of doing, 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 and not allowing myself to just be like, to let, to let this all unfold. And I, I feel it. Um, I, I don't want to say blocking or, or trapping me, but I, I feel so uncomfortable at times with I guess how this is all going to work out that I keep my mind busy with tasking and tasking and tasking and tasking. Got it. So first and <laughs> foremost, thank you very much for, you know, such a beautiful recollection of how you got to be here. Right. Cause I think it's a very unique story, especially coming from such a, you know, objective evidence-based uh, background to then come into this, you know, for back of a better word, like flowy life, yes. uh, you know, like consciousness Allowing. and spirituality <laughs> and all of that, like the complete 180 opposite. Um, yeah. And then the trials and tribulations that were there. So thank you for sharing mm -hmm. that. So what I'm curious about then, as we dive into like what's happening with your business right now, when you were sharing the last part of that story, there was this sentiment like it, it was like getting increasingly harder to find the words and to like share it. Whereas the first part was very articulate, very eloquent, like it was on point, right? So what was coming up for you like emotionally and in your body as you were sharing that last part of the story? I think uh, in the in the last part of the story, which is in my present, I'm still holding on to fear. Um, and so I've, I've released a great deal of it. Like I've in, in my conscious work, in my energy healing, I've learned how to transform energies and release fear. I do it for other people and animals. I do healings. I do it you know, with myself. I have healers. And so I've come a long, 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 long way, but there's still a thread of it with, with me. And I believe it's, it holds me back. Um, I, I guess I want to just say from just allowing, um, I'm, I'm, one of the things that I've come into awareness about is trusting in uncertainty like trusting yourself trusting in the universe a source of all creation whatever you place your trust in um trusting when on the surface it it doesn't look like anything's happening but you know that a lot of things like the wheels of change are in motion and it reminds me kind of like of a swan you know, that just looks so elegant on the surface. But if you look underneath their feet are going, my mind's a minute, you know, they're like, you know, but they do it with such grace and elegance. And I feel like I'm struggling being the swan, you know, where I can just, you know, be present and be uh, confident when I can't, when, when the change isn't happening on the surface, like in my perception like this, you know, it's not like this. It, it's, it feels like, mm, sometimes it feels like a plateau or it feels like there's not a lot of movement and it. It, with regard to my business. Yeah. Yeah. So if we were to just rewind back, whatever that was a minute, two minutes, 30 seconds, whatever that was, Right. So originally the, the question I originally asked you was, OK, so when you were retelling the last part of that story, what was the feeling of what was happening in your body and where your brain went to was this, again, beautifully articulated, very eloquent description of patterns in things that you've recognized against uh, or with yourself and Ironically, one of the things you mentioned was like, I, I have this trouble being present. Okay. And the question was essentially what was present in your body? What was present emotionally for you 
as you were retelling that last part of the story. So I would invite you again to tap into that part of you more specifically and use the least amount of words to describe what's present. I believe what is present is fear. Um, this thread of fear that I've come a long way in overcoming, meaning that I'm not just working one corporate job after another to get a paycheck. I've been, I guess, uh, you know, an entrepreneur soul, you know, an entrepreneur for the past six years uh, without that. And so I'm getting much, much better with it, but I believe that there is, I know that there is, it's still with me, like in my body, like in my heart. And I carry a lot of that energy in my back in my lower back. And I have, um, I have moments when I feel great and I feel very um, loose and free and youthful. And then I have times where I feel like, you know, there's this, uh, um, this rigidness or this um, resistance in my body. I can feel it. Got it. Um, and what do you it. feel in your body right now? You know, I, it feels like a, almost like a holding of my breath. Like I've been noticing that, um, like almost like a trepidation. Like, <laughs> I, I don't know how the, how, how I'm going to describe it. Like, um, almost like, you know, just like that waiting to exhale kind of feeling like, and where do you, you know, feel like that, that specifically? I feel it definitely like in my heart center. Okay. So like in my heart center chest. in your chest. Okay. Got yeah. it. And it seems like it feels very constrictive. Like you said, I, I couldn't, I can't exhale appropriately. I can't mm -hmm. inhale appropriately. So tell me a little bit more about that. Is it inhale, exhale? Like if you had to describe it. Mm. Yeah, I, I guess it's on both ends. I feel... Like if I, if I um, concentrate on my breath, I can inhale and exhale, but I feel like it's almost painful to fully inhale, like, like to open up fully, like almost hurts, uh, like the breath is too big or something. Okay. Uh, yeah. So the breath is when I inhale and I try to breathe into my chest, it hurts and it feels like it's too much breath to hold would that be accurate? yes okay yes are you open to diving into that piece a bit more yes okay so i would invite you and you can let me know and obviously you can stop at any time like if like i don't want to do this totally fine that's always an option on the table i always say like i go as fast and as far as you want to go so whether you want to close your eyes or open your eyes, I'm, I'm totally fine with either. Um, okay. What I would invite you when you answer, okay? So okay. I, I use this uh, in my coaching as well uh, for people like yourself who are very like intellectually oriented that, that can speak very eloquently um, to not allow the brain to go off on Take tangents. Over. Yeah, exactly. Um, I call them six word updates. So you don't necessarily have to count exactly six words, like it's not a test, but I want you to think like if I only had the capacity to answer in you know six-ish words, that's how I would invite you to answer most of the prompts. Instead of going into the story, I want you to just mm -hmm. give me as much of the facts uh, or what's present as possible. So does that make sense for you? Yes. Okay, perfect. So if you can tune into that part of your chest that is in pain when it wants to expand. I'm going to allow you to do your thing. You tune into it and you can just let me know when you're there. Okay. 
okay. I mean, I, I'm definitely there. I can feel it. I'm Perfect. Like, certainly aware of it. Beautiful. So I want you to then focus on taking that big breath and really triggering that part of you that doesn't like to do that. And let me know what surfaces when you do that. The best thing I can say about it is I feel a resistance, like Perfect. almost like I reach a, a place, like a, a state. And I, if I try to go any further, I feel like I'm going to shake, you know, like I, it's like too much. Like, Perfect. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for that. If you stay focused on that edge, right? So that place that doesn't want to expand any further. Does that part of you have anything to say? It's, yeah, just a, a fear of letting go. Okay. Letting go of what? Of control. And what are you trying to control? Or what is it trying to control? Me. So is it it's trying to control you or you're trying to control it or you're trying to control everything else or something else entirely? You know, I think the way, what it, it's, it's this control of, I would say my image or the, the facade. Um, and, I, and it comes out in a lot of ways. Um, Yeah, I think that's the best way I can say it. Like this resistance of losing myself. Like um, I, I thought about it that there's like an external, like there's two selves in a way, like their public self and your private self. And in my private self, I'm like, I don't give a shit, you know, in my public self, I care a lot. And it's let, I think that, um, yeah, I, I, you know, it's interesting because when I'm in that space, I'm not afraid of showing my whole self or being but I'm, I'm very conscientious of how I show up. And so. Um, so that's fair. I just want you to yeah. bring it back to the actual feeling and the sensation, right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. if we go back to the expansion in the chest and you've identified that this part of you is an edge, right? And the edge is control. If I mm -hmm. expand this breath, I'm going to risk losing control. And there's these two parts of me that are interplay here. So my question to you is, what's the part that wants to inhale and expand deeper? What's the part of you that wants to control? The part of me that wants to expand is, I feel like, like my soul. I call her the goddess, like all, all the, all the energies of us, like the gods and the goddesses of us, like the, the pureness of our, the essence of my being wants all of it, you know, like wants to experience all of it. Perfect. So I'm just going to remind you again, go back to the six word updates. I completely honor that part. And it's a beautiful part of you. And I love how you describe it, but just for the sake of staying on focus, I invite you to go back to 
the way that you were doing it before, right? So the part that wants to expand is essentially the, the fullest essence of you. Yes. Okay. Yes. Would it be accurate to say that the part that wants to control is the outward part? Yes. Okay. Is your true essence the one that's afraid of letting go of control or is it the external part of you? External for sure. Okay. What is it afraid of? Being judged. Um, embarrassing itself. <laughs> Uh, you know, um, maybe failure. And why does it hurt to expand? Because it opens me up to all of those things of, of being seen, of, of failing, of succeeding, of, of all of it. So it hurts to even risk being visible in your mm -hmm. fullest essence. Mm -hmm. And is it that part that's really that fragile or is it your fullest essence that is fragile? Mm -hmm. It's, it's, the ex, it's the facade that's fragile. Yet, it's primary right now. Mm -hmm. It's what everyone sees. You know, it's what I see, you know, when I look in the mirror. When I, when I see myself, um, it's kind of like making videos. There's a, there's a resistance because I don't like seeing myself. And I, and I know that's not an uncommon thing, but it, it, it exists within me. Absolutely. Great awareness for that. So when you see yourself, what do you see? I see someone, I see someone who is not where I feel, I feel like she should be. And whose voice is that? I guess the ego or the, the inner, like that, that inner dialogue. It definitely sounds like an inner critic. Yes. Yes. hundred percent. So when you step back and you take a look at all of that together, right? There is a fragile ego part of myself that is deathly afraid of losing any semblance of controlling my image. Because if it is blemished in any way, then that fragility will come to play and it's all going to crash down to the mm -hmm. point where it's actually hurts, like it physically hurts to even consider breathing into and stepping into your own essence. Is that really serving you? No, of course it isn't. Yeah, this is certainly not intellectual. 100%. I would say it's all about feeling. Yeah, it's all about feeling. So if you were to tap back into your body and you take a deep breath once again, and if you were to appreciate this part of yourself for keeping you protected by also allowing it to know that it's not needed anymore, what would it say? Thank you for your service. <laughs> you know, I, 
you know, I, I think, you know, that, that level of conscientiousness, if you will, or that mindfulness of how I'm showing up in the world has merit, but it doesn't need to run the show. And what if your true essence ran the show? I think that would be very powerful. And yeah. what would that look like? I, I, you know, this, this just ease, like, you know, like just free. Like I just um, imagine like just being free, like letting go of all of that stuff, all of that judgment, that baggage, you know, that inner critic, you know, it's, it's kind of like the body positivity stuff, uh, you know, that, that's we're very aware of i've i've noticed how i am in that like i'm you know i've been very reserved with myself i i'm not going to be out there dancing in a bikini and doing all that shaking my rolls and all that stuff i'm just kind of like oh i could never do that like like i don't have that you know and it's it doesn't feel like um like i'm it's too conscientious to, to do stuff like that. Uh, you know, concerned about what other, well, I, I'm not even going to put on other people, like what I think about myself, you know? And, uh, yeah. So if you were to breathe in your most authentic, biggest self that, doesn't have any shoulds around it. I should show up in mm -hmm. this body positivity bit, but like I'm going to breathe in and expand into my body of like who, like that goddess aspect of it. Mm -hmm. I want you to breathe that in and see what that feels like. Yeah. I mean, it feels much better just like uh, admitting it to myself. So, and to you, of course. <laughs> sure. And, and yeah, and to everybody else yeah. <laughs> listening, such a small little uh, <laughs> step, right? So if you were to breathe back into your chest, right? Like when you started this, there was constriction, there was pain, there was resistance to it. How much of that is still present now? Very little. I feel very much at ease right now. Um, you know what the most interesting thing about this is? Uh, um, it's a, it's like a, there's a lot of stuff. Where I'm like, I don't give a shit. Like I don't wear makeup and stuff. Like I, I'm not like a, a nothing's fake. You know, no filters and stuff like that. I'm kind of like this is what you see is what you get. You know, kind of person in my in my regular life. Um, but I, but like I said, there's something deeper in me that does care, <laughs> you know, like, but, but not like that. Like, I'm not going to go to the effort of hiding myself. Um, but, um, yeah, I think like, it, it's like the bigger, the game that I play in life, the more that that inner critic shows up, you know, the more that. Yeah. So, it's, you know, I yeah. would say in that case, the bigger game that I play, the more that inner critic shows up. Why? Because the bigger game that you play, everything gets magnified, not just mm. your successes, but also your potential risk for failures. Also your, you know, quote unquote, dirty laundry, like whatever that narrative is, it, it mm -hmm. is the polarity of success. You don't just get the good. You also get mm -hmm. some of the bad, but when the lights are flashing both are seen both are more exposed both is something that you have to hold and there's a part of you that is terrified of being seen unperfect right because even like when i read your bio perfectly polished everything's on point 
you know, everything's listed. When I listen to your story up until the point of the present, beautifully articulated, very eloquent, like all the things that I've said before, right? I.e., it's been made to be perfect for outside consumption. But then when we get to the now, it hurts to show mm -hmm. up authentically, right? Your brain even went to like, well, I should be, you know, like an influencer. Or you could mm -hmm. just be mm -hmm. like Susan. Like you could just mm -hmm. show up mm -hmm. as you in your fullest self. So this whole bit of like my business, like I'm doing a lot, but I'm not being. What you are doing is you are flirting and reinforcing the ceiling and only the ceiling because the reason the being can't be there is it would mean expanding my being beyond the ceiling. So that's why there's all these plateaus and nothing happens because if something were to happen, that's where the light would be shined. It would be shined on everything, right? And mm -hmm. as you saw at the beginning, that's terrifying. And it's only when you allow that awareness to take a little bit of a back seat and you begin to basically practice building a new body, like one that can actually hold the bigness of you, both from the fear and from the success, that's where you begin to open up the space for the stuff you are doing to actually manifest into the results that you're looking for. So how does all of that land for you? Yeah, it, it all makes perfect sense. And it feels right. I mean, it, it, it definitely feels right. I always recognize that the answers are always within us. Um, it's just sometimes we don't like the answer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, definitely. That, that's, that's usually the case, which is why we don't uh, <laughs> usually go in and, and look. There, we don't want to see it. Yeah, I always say that look at yourself as the hardest yet. Yeah hundred percent. So in that case, I mean, I know this is obviously a much bigger uh, thing to tackle that can be done in one podcast episode. But as far as, you know, what was present here today, does this feel complete for you or is there still something left outstanding? You know, Jessica, I'm pleasantly surprised. No, I'm, I'm not going to say that. Um, I, it's, this has been a great experience and I want to thank you for it. And um, I hope welcome. more people are brave enough to come on and have this. It, it, again, I think it, um, it it has you, a like for me, I'll speak for myself, it has me addressing these fears of, sh of showing up authentically um, when it's not comfortable, you know, when it's not just the highlights. And, and so I, I thank you for it. I appreciate it very grateful you're very welcome and uh if you can then just summarize in your own words kind of what was your experience like coming here and then what were like your highlights and takeaways for being through this process you know coming in i it, it was it was that i i had that um inner critic talking very judgmental very judgmental uh about You know, like, uh, you know, I always say the mind, it, it always has something to say, you know, it always has this. And for me to come and do this show, I, I had to quiet that judgmental thing. And um, now I feel, I, I just feel very grateful. You know, I'm, I'm very grateful that I did it. Um, because it's it shines that light it, um so i think what it is Grasco, is that i tell myself that i'm afraid of everyone judging me but i'm actually judge, the judge yeah yeah especially in those quiet moments before you actually decide to show up there's mm -hmm. nobody else there even though our brain tricks us that there is but it's actually just us using the archetype of somebody else to judge mm -hmm. ourselves it's, yeah so, it's projection yep 100 percent. so yeah. great awareness and uh thank you for sharing that in your story and your presence so floor is yours now to close us off let everybody know who's the best person to find you where can they find you floor is yours for that thank you 
Well, I can always be found on my website at susannicholas.org. You can find me on Instagram at Conscious Susan. Um, I host a room, a show every Wednesday called Money Consciousness, Overcoming Generational Poverty. That's a big part of my story um, from that feeling of um, having to work to earn money and to support myself coming out of survival mode. So I, I, I do a lot of healing in that area um, for myself and for others. That was also the nature of my TED, Money Consciousness, Overcoming Generational Poverty. And uh, yeah, I, you know, you can find my books on Amazon and Instagram. Um, I'm the author of The Duality of Being, Perspectives from Multidimensional Travel. And I also write conscious children's books. And my first one was Two Parts of Me, I Am More Than My Body, uh, just this duality of our beingness for children. And the second title is The Death of Cupcake, for children who have experienced loss while they're still children. And my third uh, title for my children's books are coming out, it's coming out at the end of the year. It's called Poor Max, about a story about a child overcoming generational poverty. So, Beautiful. Yeah. That's, uh, that's awesome. And obviously we'll include all of that in the show notes. Uh, but Susan, thank you very much for coming on. And uh, for everybody else listening, we'll see you on the next one. Thank you.